Have you ever thought what it's like to be one of us in the fourth dimension? Have you? The exiles? Always search the truth. My truth is in stars. This senseless evil king. One day, I shall come back. Yes, I shall come back. Until then, there must be no regrets, no tears, no anxiety. Just go forward in all your beliefs. And prove to me that I am not mistaken in mind. Yes, it all started out as a mild curiosity in the junkyard. Now it's turned out to be quite a, a, a quite a great spirit of adventure, don't you think? was born on the 8th of January 1908. His first stage appearance was in 1924 and he first entered films in 1931. He also made innumerable TV appearances including The Army Game, Crimes of Passion and of course Doctor Who. I was raised with William Hartnell, he was my first doctor. I remember watching the first episode and he was a face that I'd recognised. I cast William Hartnell because I had seen him do two things which I felt, I felt um, nearer the different sides of that character. One was um, he played this rather very irascible sergeant in the army game. A uh, successful sitcom at the time. Um, I also remember him playing lots of policemen in B movies that seemed to turn up a lot of times on television as well. And then he played a rather pathetic figure in, in a film called The Sporting Life, just about rugby, and he, was, he played a sort of down and out talent scout. And I thought, therefore, he was an actor who could combine those qualities. Of course. <laughs> who else? Time Meddler came at the end of the second season of Doctor Who. It's one of the few of the early serials uh, of Doctor Who that remain in its uh, entirety. And uh, I like to think Billy Hartnell gave one of his best performances in that as well. He's got to be stopped. He must be stopped. He manages to spar verbally um, with Peter but Butterworth Monk. Doctor, I must remind you, this is a monastery, a place of refuge, sanctuary. Yes. Very well, if you have another cloak with the same type of cowl, proceed. There's some physical comedy in there as well. Come on, you want the eggs to get cold? Go away, I'll come out when I... I think what he brought to the role was an, an absolute incredible commitment. He really believed in the Doctor, he really loved the part, he thought it was important. He liked the idea that he was appealing to children and that they found that character interesting. He loved the program, he loved the concept, he loved his part, and he wanted it to be as perfect as it possibly could be. Come along, we've got a lot to do, which is a very dangerous business. He could be really irascible and very irritable, and if he was getting it wrong, which sometimes he did because his memory wasn't as good as it should be, so he didn't always remember the lines, and often they gave him long speeches to do, which wasn't easy stuff. Hmm? Bill Hartnell was a delightful man, and it hurts me to hear people say how 
difficult he was to work with. Maybe after my time he was difficult, I don't know, but I can only go on my experience with him. Goodbye, Susan. Goodbye, my dear. The brilliant thing about William Hartnell is he just had a sort of magic about him. He was old and grumpy, but just lovable in, in that way that um, kids really like sort of old grandparents and stuff. You, they sort of seem stern, but underneath you think, oh, bless. When William Hartnell decided or was asked to leave the series, um, they, were, they, were, they were stuck with the problem and they solved it with the idea that the Doctor being an alien could regenerate into another being, uh, a way of prolonging his life. The search was on to find someone to take Hartnell's place. Very, very difficult job because Hartnell had become so entrenched in the role. Originally the show wasn't supposed to, to last for more than you know, a season or so. So when William Hartnell left, yeah, I mean it was, you know, that was the most important casting decision they made. Exterminate all humans, Daleks, Gorka, and 